Mark Rettlesch. But the reason we have to make these cuts is because this expenditure has been unmanaged. As my honourable friend for Ipswich says, for the first time there will be more within this supposed annually managed category than there is that subject to departmental expenditure limits. But because of what the Chancellor is doing today, for the first time for this £120 billion or so of public spending, it will actually be properly annually managed. It will be managed by the Treasury and it will be subject annually to a vote of this House. Now, can anyone just think of, say, the Home Office or the Department for Transport just uh, slipping out that it was spending a billion and a half more than had been previously planned? The first thing a minister has to do if something is going above, it, above their budget is to go and try and find another, to bear down on that, find out why, do something about it. If necessary, find another area of their departmental budget where savings can be made. Absolutely. If absolutely necessary, go to the Chancellor and see if they can make, it ha make a case to have a proportion of the strictly limited mm -hmm. contingency reserve. I will. Uh, I'm very grateful for what Honourable Friend. I listened very carefully to what the Honourable Lady uh, from, from Hackney said. At no point during her speech did she think about the other side of the coin, the people referred to by my Honourable Friend for Harlow and the Chancellor, the people that have to pay the bills. They have needs and requirements, and many low-paid people have to pay the bills. She never mentioned them once. Mm. Uh, and we learned at the, at the budget that in a period of just three and a half months since the autumn statement... The amount we're going to be spending this year on benefits for the disabled, as my honourable friend from Royal West will know well, is a billion and a half more than was previously estimated. Now, in the past, we'd have just ignored that, just borrowed the extra money without even, without even debating it in this House. At least now we have to have a debate. So the OBR ex expects that, um, that that's going to be, be clawed back over the next couple of years. We'll spend a similar amount more next year, but not the following year. But if that estimate isn't right, surely we as MPs representing the taxpayers, representing our members who benefit from other benefits, who benefit from the NHS, actually have to look at that and say, what are we going to do about it? Now, I have many people who are applying for personal independence uh, payment or employment support allowance who come to my surgeries. And I see, see cases where I'm very sympathetic to those people and think that a misjudgment has been made in the assessment. And it may be that the OBR is right in what it says about what the spending's going to be. And I'm not saying we should look at those benefits and reduce eligibility or that's where the reductions must fall. But if the spending continues getting greater and greater and there, we either have to borrow the extra money or raise taxes for the extra money, as the, uh, as the side opposite may wish, or we have to find savings elsewhere. And constituents uh, of mine... Yeah, who've been getting, if, if they're lucky, a 1% sort of wage increase earlier in this Parliament, they were seeing people on benefit getting increases above 5%. And in the five years from 2007, benefit payments increased by 10% relative to those people who are in work. And this year, for the first time, we're actually having a 1% limit on those. But we've seen inflation come down. It's now 1.7% rather than nearly 3% when we brought this in. And I don't want to make further reductions in welfare benefits. But if it is the case that we're seeing people who are disabled having many more, more in the payments, 1.5 billion this year than we thought, and if that continues, we have to look and make a decision. Which are the priorities? Where do we want to make savings? Or will we just see more taxes and more borrowing as the side opposite would like? Mm. The other really important principle about today is the Chancellor is returning control of spending to Parliament. Yeah, yeah, Parliament yeah, yeah. used to debate the government estimates in details. Now we have Estimates Day, and the last thing that's debated is anything to do with the spending estimates. Between the wars, Parliament lost that power, and it is since that period that we have seen an explosion in state spending. So perhaps by having a vote in Parliament on this area of £120 billion of, of spending, a lot of it's coming in below, that's, uh, that's good news and not something that the, the Treasury needs to come to, to us for permission for more taxpayers' money. But if it's coming in more than 2% above that was projected, there ought to be a debate and, and a decision in this House as to whether that's something we're going to accept. Well, I give way. I'm grateful to my honourable friend giving way. Uh, he's making an extremely elegant point. Isn't the truth that the Labour Party's positioning of itself as the welfare party has betrayed those uh, who depend on the welfare system in two ways? It's meant that money required for those most in need is spent on those not uh, most in need. And secondly, it's entrenched and locked hundreds of thousands of the most vulnerable families into dependency on welfare, which is the great tragedy of the welfare state that they have supported. 
Uh, my honourable friend is, is completely right. The, the, the Labour Party used to be the Workers' Party. It's become the Welfare Party. It's become the defender of the public sector. Before we, when Parliament used to discuss these, these, these matters 90 years ago and before, the radicals were those who were trying to control government spending, who were standing up for the taxpayers, the people in their constituency, and trying to reduce the amount of money that ministers were spending on their behalf. Yet today, all we see from the Labour Party is a defence of welfare spending, a defence on whatever's paid in the public sector, while ignoring those, often on very low incomes, who are constituents who are having to pay for all that. So for the first time, we're actually going to look at that comparison between what we're spending at welfare and what we need elsewhere to do with that money. And that is something that I support wholeheartedly, this House having its say on spending. There is an excellent precedent in, in this, this, this area, one area of spending where we did have a, a debate in this Parliament. The, the Government came to this House with a motion saying we should freeze spending within the European Union. Yet this House looked at this motion and we decided that wasn't good enough. We wanted to see a cut. We voted for a cut and the Government went out and delivered that cut. Parliament taking control of spending. Perhaps now with this welfare area of 120 billion, where previously it had just gone up and up, and oh well, you know, there's a problem, we're going to have to spend more on these disabled claimants, we're sympathetic to them, that's fine, we'll just borrow the extra money. For the first time, we're going to be forced into a making a decision. What is it we do to get proper control of public spending, to represent our constituents, to stand up for the taxpayer? And what we've seen with the Chancellor is not only has he brought in this fiscal watchdog, not only is he reforming pensions, but I think in this third area he will be remembered for restoring control of spending yeah. to Parliament. Yeah. Not to ever buy from